beginner band workout today. Uh, so you will need a resistance band. You'll need a chair as well, just for modifications. It's not really part of the, the main workout, so it's not necessary if you don't have one. Um, and then we're just going to do three groups, three exercises, three rounds. 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Um, without further ado, with just doing those three, we're going to start with some arm swings. So we start palm up, and then we go over palm down. With just doing those three, we're able to spend a little bit more time in our warm up and our cool down. I did want to make this workout a more introductory beginner class. So most of the moves are fairly simple. And anybody could do this workout. Uh, you don't even need to really be dressed in athletic clothing, to be honest. It's not too bad to do in like uh, your everyday clothes. So I'm just going to some side leans. So I'm stepping off to the right. I'm pushing my hips to the right and keeping that trail leg straight. So the motion just comes from me allowing my right knee to bend, pushing my hips to the right. And that just creates a little bit of stretch in my trail leg groin there. And I can move through this as uh, at my own pace. I won't, I won't say as slow as as quickly. You can certainly take it as slow as you'd like though. And to the other side, I'm just going to take an exaggerated step to the left, push my hips, and I just stand up back straight. So it's getting the lower body ready to move. We're getting some stretching in as well as some activation of this lower body. And then we'll push our hands back, crawl our hands down, feel that stretch in the hamstrings. As we stand up, we're going to pull back our left fingers, arms overhead, hips to the left, lean to the right, hips to the right, lean to the left. All right, we're going to do that once more. When we stand up this time, we'll be pulling back on our right fingers. Same thing, arms over head, hip to the right, lean to the left, hip to the left, lean to the right. And we'll just do some quick quarter squats. So I push my hips back, hips go back first. Then I bend my knees, keep my chest lifted. And then just go to a depth where you feel comfortable, right? Like you might have just woken up. Movement might not <laughs> be there for a full squat yet. So just take your time and ease into it. If you have something like a couch or a chair, you know, you can use that to do your warm up where you touch your bum down to that surface. Okay, since we're using the band, I want to do one more stretch. We're going to go off to the ground for this one. We're going to take, got to make sure everything's changing in this room. Uh, take this band, make sure it's on the mid part of your foot. We're going to lie back. Foot's going to go straight up. I'm going to point my toe towards my shin. And now I can feel that stretch in my hamstring. But we're going to move through this. So I'm going to go to the outside. Make sure. The outside. And then I'm going to come over. And I'm going to cross my body. And we're just going to move through sort of that arc. One more time here. To the outside and across. Okay, then we can switch legs. And that's real simple. What you can do is I just put both feet in the band and then I take that um, left foot out. Now I'm doing my right foot. Still pointing my toe towards my shin to get that little bit more in the calf. And then I'm going to go to the outside. And then I'm going to cross my body. Try to keep both shoulders 
on the ground the whole time. When you cross over, it might be a little bit more challenging. And we're moving through this. That's one. We're going to do three of those. Keep the toe pointed the whole time. There's two. And there's three. All right, we're going to stand back up. So let's go ahead and stand back up slowly. We're going to do our rotator cuff stretch as well as, well as a band pull apart, and then we'll go right into our workout. So I have the band in my one hand. I'm going to go behind my back here. So the left hand, which is the lower one, is the one that I'm actually worrying about mobilizing. So just by going up and down here, you can see that my left hand is being pulled up, and that's the stretch. See, it's not a great movement, or not, not great in terms of distance. Uh, it is a great movement. It's not a big movement. And you can feel that shoulder starting to warm up. We'll subside. So now I want my right hand to be the low hand. And then I pull up. And one side might be a little bit easier for you. You might get a little bit closer on one side. That's natural, but we do want to try to make that as even as possible. So if you notice that one side is easier than the other, you really should try to add this uh, stretch into your day on both sides, and it will get it will get closer to even uh, practicing both sides. Okay, and then our last one is we're just going to do some band pull aparts. The closer you grab on your band, and the more you grab with your band, the harder it is. So I'm just grabbing one side, uh, about shoulder width apart on this, and then all I'm doing is I'm pulling the band apart, squeezing my shoulder blades in the back. And you can tell this is a little bit more of an activation exercise. That's completely right, it is an activation exercise. I actually do have one more warm-up exercise we're supposed to do. That's without the band, but we are back on the ground. Alright, so our last form of exercise is just our glute bridges. We're going to go on the weird ground. Feet are close to my butt. Everything else is on the ground. I'm like flat. Knees are bent. And then I'm just going to push my hips up, touch my bum down, and then hips back up real quick. Down and up as high as you can. So I get the muscles ready to activate with resistance. I know we use the band with resistance for our band pull apart. That's just a great exercise, no matter where you do it. You want to make sure our lower body is ready, our upper body is ready, our core is ready, because that's all in today's workout. I still don't have a remote for this. So we're doing it manually. All right, so we have our shoulder press, sumo squat, and bird dogs. Shoulder press with the band. You could be doing this with like cans as well or with water bottles for most of these exercises. Shoulder press, I just step into the band and I press up. And if I wanted to make this easier, I could sit down because now the, the band doesn't need to travel as far, right? So the resistance isn't as heavy. I don't need to worry about arching my back or worry about my core. I can just um, worry about sitting and pressing. The sumo squat, I'm just stepping in the band. My feet are wider than my hips, toes pointed out. And then I just squat hips up. You can use the chair if you'd like. And then bird dogs. As we know, opposite arm, opposite leg goes out. 
observe how the flag goes out. All right, we will get started. So go ahead and get in position for your shoulder press. We are going in three, two, and one. So this is pretty much going to be constant. The band is nice because it's it's a lot easier on your joints. That being said, it's not like using weights is a bad thing. I use weights, of course, all the time. Sumo squat. I'm just a little bit wider. Push my hips back, my chest stays lifted. I sit down into that squat. The band is more doing work keeping my feet out than it is providing me resistance in the actual squat pattern. So what you can do is you can grab a little bit lower on the band and that gets exemplified, but it does add resistance to standing up as well. Okay, and then we have our bird dogs. Might have given myself a little bit too much liberty with the uh, time on the warm-up, but that's okay. We're just extending up the arm off the leg. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you can, of course, touch knee to elbow, extend again. Knee to elbow, extend again. But like I said, this is a very beginner class. You can, of course, opt out of that. Okay, we're done there. And just like I said, you can opt out with the, both the shoulder press and the sumo squat, depending on your level. You can opt out of the resistance band too, right? Like your arms have weight. If you are just starting out, you might just want to do your shoulder press with your with your arms. If you're, you know, I would say if you're very deconditioned, and you can do your sumo squat without a band, and that's still tough. Even if you're not extremely deconditioned. I'll just show you with the chair here how I use that. I just sort of touch down, right? Like it doesn't look like I'm sitting. My feet are still wide. My chest is still lifted. I got a little bit lower on the band if I want some more resistance. And then I just move through at my own pace. If I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging, maybe I'm moving a little bit quicker through these exercises. Uh, or if I want to take more time, maybe I'm just doing one every five, six seconds. All right, and our bird dogs. You don't need to do that touch, right? Like this is a core exercise on its own, just making sure that we're stabilized. You can see as I do this, I don't have to shift my weight. I'm using my core muscles to, to balance me, right? I'm not using I don't have to, you know, shift my weight or turn my torso. All right, last round, we go into our shoulder press. And if you want, you can go elbows forward. That's more a military press. It's a lot more anterior delt and it's a lot more challenging. I'm just going from the side here. Again, you could be seated to cut down on the distance the band has to travel, and thus, as we all know, a rubber band uses logarithmic resistance. So by cutting down that distance, you uh, cut down the resistance greatly. And then our sumo squat. Go 
put the sumo squat too. You allow space to sit down in too, right? So my legs are wide, toes are pointed out, and as I squat down, my knees track over my toes. That's important in our squat. Knees track over the toes. So now my knees are going out as well, and that creates a lot of space for me to sit down. Then our bird dog and group one is done. So again, we want to focus on not having to lean to shift our weight. And then once you master that, you can try not shift the weight the whole time as we touch knee to elbow and extend again. Okay, and you can go ahead and grab a drink. I'm going to load up round two here. So we have a chest press. We have our deadlift. We have our dead bug. So our chest press, we're on, our, on the ground. I'm just going to do this quick. Standing. So you're going to be in that same position we were in for our glute bridge. The band is behind us, and we're just pressing out. Now, of course, you could do this standing as I'm doing it, or you could do it seated from your chair, so the band's just around my back, and I'm pressing out. Now, I think I'm going to do it like that today from the chair, since this is a beginner class. And the other thing is it, is it cuts down on a lot of up and down, which is difficult to do in 10 seconds. Our deadlift, I'm stepping on the band, just regular distance apart on the feet. I grab nice and low on the band. Now, the deadlift is a more advanced um, maneuver, but we're just going to make it nice and simple. So I'm standing up nice and tall here. I'm just going to push my hips back, keep my chest lifted. All I want you to focus on today is pushing those hips back and standing up. You don't need to go down all the way to your ankles, just try to go from your knees up. So more of a hip hinge today. And then a dead bug. So we still need to get up and down off the ground, but by changing our chest press, we've made it a little easier. Arms up, knees bent, opposite arm, opposite leg out, opposite arm, opposite leg out. All right. You need to make it easier. To shorten your distance on those. If you don't have a band for uh, the chest press, you can go to modified push up. And for the deadlift, you don't really need weight if you're being you just practice the form. All right, and we're going in three, two, and one. So go ahead and grab your band, sit on your chair. Band is around your back. I'm doubling up here. I'm not really doubling up, I guess, but ensuring that. I'm getting both sides so I can maximize resistance because this isn't too hard. It's not too much resistance, but you can still feel your chest. And the nice thing about this is you can finish your push. And what I mean by that is push all the way and then come all the way back. You don't really get that as much when you're lying down because your shoulder blades don't have the don't have the uh, freedom of movement. So I'm grabbing on my band, keep my chest lifted. I push my hips back. That's what I'm working with. Hips back and forward. Hips back, chest stays lifted and forward. So if you want to get, get more resistance, you just grab lower on the band. Hips back and forward, chest stays lifted. I find the deadlift is an advanced, more advanced exercise because people get in their head too much. All right, into the dead bug. Again, if I wanted to make this easier, I just shorten up the movement. Arms generally can still go, it's just generally shortening up the movement from the lower body. So I'm just touching my heel down onto the ground. 
And again, the more cold that left this pipe, then my lag cooling. Okay, we can sit up onto our chair. Do our band chest press. If I wanted to make this give myself more resistance, I just grab lower on the band or try to get my hands closer together on the band as I press out. And I just have this around my lower shoulder blade strips right up a little bit there. And as I press, I can press out and up a little bit, but my shoulders, elbows, and wrists are all stacked at the end. deadlift. I'm going to grab a little bit lower on the band this time to give myself some more resistance. And if you feel that you've got the form perfect, you can add a little bit more depth to this, right? You can get closer to the ankles, closer to the mid shin. But for the meantime, knees is fine. You're still using those hamstring and posterior muscles to straighten it out. The band. Okay. Then we go into our dead bug for the second time. Get on the ground slowly. Arms are right over shoulders. Legs are bent at 90-90. We extend opposite arm, opposite leg. I don't touch the ground when I extend fully. And that keeps the core engaged the whole time. When I do the heels, I'll touch the heels to the ground. But when I extend, I try not to touch heel to ground, and that keeps the core engaged the whole time. All right, and we'll sit up slowly. Grab our resistance band for our chest press. Final chest press here. Bands around my lower shoulder blades. I press out. Wrist. Shoulders, elbows all stacked at the end. I'm still sitting up nice and tall as I do this. You could do this lying down on the ground if you'd like. Certainly not too bad after the dead bug. Okay, this is nice uh, when you have multiple resistance bands. I generally just use this red one, um, but you need more resistance for this deadlift, then you do the chest press, right? The big thing is that chest staying lifted, right? And that's what helps create a nice straight spine. If I allow my chest to collapse or my shoulders to come forward, this is where I start to round, you see? This is where now I'm using my lower back to pick up the weight. Whereas if I push my hips back, keep my chest lifted, I'm using a lot more of my hamstrings, um, erector spine, eye, all those good muscles. All right, into our final dead bug. Our opposite arm, opposite leg. Nice and slow. Try not to touch. And again, if you need to make these. Even if you need to make it like even easier than the dead bug, we can go alternating sort of heel tap downs or we can do a reverse crunch with both legs at the same time. And that's a little bit easier for some people as well. But that is group two. So go ahead, get up slowly, grab some water. We have one more group. And we're going to jump right into it as we are uh, uh, running a little short on time. I took too much time in the warm-up, but never a bad thing. All right, so I'm starting the clock. We're just going to go right into our resistance band row. So I'm stepping on my band, pushing my hips back like I was in that deadlift position, pulling my elbows past my body. That stays lifted, elbows past the body. If you need to stand up a little bit more, you can, but it turns a little bit more into an upright row. So I'll show you on round two how we can do a row while standing up nice and straight if you find that difficult. Monster walk, 
We're standing in our band already. Uh, I'm going to actually cross over. So I'm grabbing the left side with my right hand and vice versa. Little hinge. And then we're just walking laterally. We'll take two steps. Two steps. Two steps. Two steps. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a hinge, bend at the knees. And you can feel it in the side of the glute there. All right, and then our pal off press, we're going to be standing in our band, grabbing it sort of in the same way as, I guess we haven't really grabbed it like this, as our squat. And then we're just going to press out and stand back in. If you need to make it a little easier, or a little harder, I should say, you stand a little bit wider. And the idea here is we just don't want to fold forward. It's just a press out and back in, using the core to stabilize. Okay. So for our resistance band row, what we can do is we can treat it like almost like a bow and arrow. So I've grabbed one side of the band. I need a little less resistance than that. And I just pull back. Now, this is better in some ways, but it's worse in one glaring way, and that we got to switch sides. I'll show you the center, actually. Kind of see the back as I pull through. It's nice to get unilateral because then you're working both sides evenly. The glaring weakness is you can only do 15 seconds at a time in this. Okay, with our monster walk. If you don't have a band for these, you can always just uh, deepen your squat a little bit more as you shuffle. We're doing two steps each side. I just needed to get back and frame there. So it's an exaggerated step, exaggerated, but I never return. I never let my feet get closer than hip width. Exaggerated out, hip width. Exaggerated out, hip width. All right, another pal off press. So you might be wondering how this is a core exercise. And essentially, we're using our core to not let our arms drag our torso down with the resistance of the band. And we have to use our core to also keep our arms lifted in this position. No, you practice this exercise enough times and you'll win that game they always have at fucking domes where you have to hold it the the case of water will say. Ten more seconds. I went over somewhere. Yeah, we're we're way done that. We're right into our rows. <laughs> All right, so a little bit more time there than we need to be. But that's okay. We're just going to eat a little bit into our rest time. So we're going to go till 35 on this. And then at 40, we're going right into our monster walk. So it's last set. We have to dig a little bit deep. Our monster walks, and we're right into it. We'll do these till 510, 520. We get our power off press in till 550. I was getting the feeling, I was like, I'm pretty tired on these. And I thought we were only halfway through, but we were about know, five seconds over. Time just flies when you're having so much fun. Okay, then our pal off press is next. So again, I'm just standing regular width here. And I just press my arms out straight and return. Arms out straight to about shoulder height. Turn. 
a little bit lower, switch with the arms on top there. And you might not feel it in your core the same way that when you do a dead bug that you feel that, that burn, but you can certainly feel your core stabilizing and brace up. That's the important thing there. Okay. So that puts us at 801. So if you have to go, I understand. We're just going to do a quick, quick couple of stretches here. We'll just start on our chair with our modified pigeon. I'm going to take my left leg, I'm going to cross it over my right, slightly and forward. Here for a little bit. I wanted to get some, show you some more uh, stretches with the band, but we'll do that next week. Um, Actually, I'm off next week, so we won't we won't do that next week. Uh, <laughs> we'll do that another week. We'll switch sides. Slight lean forward. Stand up, turn around, do our chair child pose. So I'm just going to put both hands on the seat of my chair. I'm going to push my hips back, head in between my elbows. Feel I'm stretching my lower back, my lats. I I always give my chair a little bit of a of a pull with the you know my palms. That just makes sure I'm getting a stretch in my lats as well. All right, then we can sort of stand up or you know, stretch that out. We're going to do a chair cat to cow. So essentially, this is neutral. My chin is neutral. My spine is neutral. Tuck my chin, arch my spine. You can do this on a desk, on a counter, whatever. I don't find it as super effective as the ground cat to cow but i like to teach you these exercises because it'd be great if you could add them into your day and i know not during every during everybody's day it's not as easy to get up and down off the ground so but if you have a chair or a desk it's a little easier um so next is our calf stretch i'm just going to do both legs at the same time I extend out and then I just press my heels into the ground. So it's an exaggerated step out. Heels into the ground. If you need a little bit more, you just gotta go a little further away. If you're not comfortable holding this almost plank like position, you can do one at a time. And then you have the front leg supporting you. And we'll go into our door frame stretch. Arm shoulder height. My palm is either up or my thumb is up, twisting through the top. My arm is straight and that creates a stretch. I always hold this area because I just really feel the stretch in that area. We'll switch sides. This will be our final stretch for today because we have gone a little bit over. Really feel the stretch in that chest and shoulder area. All right, we can all just shake it all out. I hope you enjoyed today's workout. Uh, I'm back on the schedule on Thursday, so I hope to see you then. Although Thursday's class is a little bit more uh, difficult with, uh, with the HIT class. But if, as always, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to send me an email or leave a comment. Uh, however you want to get in contact with me. And I hope you have a wonderful day.